Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and the project that we're going to work on today in our first Sloyd or knife style project in our green woodworking series is called the FID. And this FID is 12 inches long. It's measured off in one inch increments so that it becomes a measuring device and it's used for marline spike seamanship. It's used for opening lays in plats of rope so that you can create eyes or weave rope inside of another rope. And this will come in very handy for us during some of our furniture making when we're using ropes and things like that for seats for some of our chairs and things like that so that we can open those lays of rope and feed rope in between the lays. It also is a depth gauge because it's measured in inches. It is your ruler because it's measured in inches. And in days gone by of marline spike seamanship, it was also used as a last ditch weapon or to open a quick hole in sail canvas. Stay with me, and we'll get started. Okay, for today's project, what we're looking for is hickory. And this is a young hickory. And I'll break one of these end branches off for you. You can kind of see the leaf pattern here of the hickory. They're alternating leaf patterns, kind of oblong shape. And there's several of them on one branch. All of these have several leaves on one branch and they alternate. Now, hickory is a very, very good hardwood. It's great for making bows, it's great for making handles for tools and things like that. And what we're going to make today, similar to a tool handle, it's going to be a handheld type tool that we're going to use. So we're going to use hickory to make that tool. So what we're going to want is a piece that's about an inch to an inch and a quarter in diameter and about 13 inches long because our finished piece is going to be 12 inches. We'll get us a piece harvested get back over to the classroom and get to work. Now for removing the bark off of this piece we're going to grasp the knife just like a fist just like this and we're going to do a push cut using our shoulder momentum or our shoulder strength we're not going to bend our arm and as we come down with this blade we're going to start at the crux of our hand here and we're going to come down a little bit like this and we're going to use the entire length of that blade as we make that cut so that blade's constantly moving sideways, which will give us much more cutting power than just a sheer cut that was straight down. You can see how that's working. Now if I get a knot, I can just use a straight sheer cut with that, just like that, to trim that knot away. And get that squared up. There's another knot right here. I can do the same thing. Just a sheer cut across that. Turn it over, get the rest of my bark off the same way. And you'll be able to feel your knife. It will cut much better for you if you don't try to go straight down. It'll cut much better for you if you use the entire length of the blade with your cuts. And this is a basic cut that you need to learn is this power cut, this power push cut. And again, don't bend your arm or your elbow Use your shoulder, lift your body up, and when you come down, just push straight down with your shoulder. You can do some pretty fine shaping this way. Just kind of go up and down at the waist. You get around these knots, that's where you're going to run into issues with your shaping. So just go around them and then shear cut through them. Just like that. Then go back around with short cuts and shape it. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's grain right there. That we kind of have to get through. To smooth that out. And we can do that with slow controlled strokes. We can even do it with scissor strokes. And scissor strokes are just kind of where you've got... Your knuckles are kind of right next to each other like this, and you're just kind of pulling this way. Again, using the whole length of that blade to give you that cut. Again, you've got safety there. There's no way that thing can hit you cutting that way. Now the other way that I find 
works really well for shaping something. I'm going to move this a little bit. Is what I call a knee, a knee grip. Okay, and any grip that you're using with a knife should have some kind of a safety involved in it. And for us here, the safety is we've got this thing outside of the triangle of death here, and everything that we do is going to take that knife away from us. And if we put the knife here in our leg, it gives us the leverage that we need. And we can pull the piece and push the knife at the same time, just like this. And I'm just kind of rotating the knife with my wrist as I go. If I need to pull off larger amounts of material, I can do those same type cuts by holding the knife stationary to just take out smaller chunks of wood, like this. I can also do that same thing with a longer cut, like this, but I'm going to get a finer cut with my blade if I use the full length of my blade, like this, when I'm cutting. The next thing that you're going to want to get used to when you are carving wood with a knife is cutting toward yourself. And there's lots of ways that you can do that safely. If you choke up on the knife a little bit, you can see I've got my thumb on the side of that blade. And I bury this workpiece in my body, and I turn my wrist out a little bit so that the only thing that can hit me is the handle of this knife. And when I pull that knife in, I'm dropping the blade down at the same time so that it stops. The stop for that is always going to be right there at my body. Once that blade hits my body, or that handle hits my body, excuse me, once that handle hits my body, that blade's never going to come in contact with my body by doing that. And I can get some very fine cuts doing that. Pulling the blade down. Another type cut that I can use is I can use a push cut with my thumb, a thumb assisted cut. And that works really good if I'm trying to round something off or tape or something like this where I can just do little cuts at a time my thumbs controlling the blade I've got that same grip on the blade that I had with my push cuts or my shear cuts and I'm just pushing it with my thumb the blade can never come in contact with anything that way it's very controlled and I can take off very small chunks to do exactly what I want to do to round this thing off just like this. Okay, another thing you can do is you can choke up on the knife like this, get it tucked up into you this way, and you can actually use these back fingers to push that blade up. And that will allow you to get very fine shavings, especially around things like spoon bowls. And again, the stop is here. Your knuckle's going to hit the wood, so the knife can't go into you. And you keep this hand below the blade, and you're just pushing. It's a very light cut. It's not a power cut. You're just a trim cut by pushing the blade up with this hand and controlling the angle with this hand. All right, now your first real priority with this project is number one to get it barked and number two to get it straight and you can see there's a little bit of a hook right here we want this thing as straight as possible so we're going to have to remove some material around that knot because that knot is what's doing that so we're going to have to get in there fairly deep and if we go against the grain like that then we've got to come in with some finer cutting techniques to get that straightened out. Come in from the other side. There's little sweeping cuts like that away from your body. Fine shaving, same thing, come up in here like we talked about before. And get some really fine shavings that way as well.
Now I need to start taking off a few bigger chunks all the way around. And I'll just facet this thing all the way around like this. And I like to use my leg right here to kind of push against when I'm doing this as well. And it gives you kind of a guide. Remember that this knife can't hit anything as long as you've got this stump backing. Now when you get down to where you're getting fairly pointed down here, what I generally do is I'll just take a series of small push cuts, thumb assist cuts, whatever you want to call them. Anytime I'm pushing a knife, it's always a push cut to me. And I'll chamfer that down a little bit because what happens is you tend to lose downward pressure or forward pressure on the end of a cut and you end up a little wider on the end of the cut in a cylinder than you do at the beginning. In other words, your cut depth doesn't stay the same. So I compensate for that a little bit at the end by rounding it off. And then when I come back over here with this knee lever <clears throat> to start my rounding process, I don't have to worry about that. I've already compensated for it. Remember, you're trying to keep a cylinder here a cone. So you can't get too deep on the front side without taking something off further away. Okay, now that we have our point and our taper done, I want to show you when I designed this knife, I designed it so that it would have the abilities to be a spoke shave for taking fine shavings. It's got a hard 90 degree spine on it for that reason. What that does is it allows me to shape my wood without having to have another tool. I don't have to have any sandpaper really. I don't have to have a spoke shaver or a draw knife if I'm in the woods. And I can do a lot of my finer shaping work with the back of this knife. So if you build a knife or if you design a knife and have it made my suggestion would be that you make sure it has that 90 degree spine on it so that you can do this stuff and if you hit an area where you've gone against the grain like right there just come back the other way with it don't worry about it as far as rounding goes it's a pretty simple process. You're just going to do a series of push cuts up to the top, just like this, and facet the end of it, very similar to the way you would make a bow drill spindle. And in all essence, and for all sake of purpose, what you've made here is a hickory bow drill spindle. It's a little bit oversized, but it's about the right diameter, about the right shape. You want the top of this thing to be fairly pointed where the bearing block goes and you want the bottom to be fairly blunt. Now, you don't want the bottom to be completely rounded over on a bow drill, but this right here is about what you want. Now we're going to go beyond that and we're going to come up about halfway and knock another series of chips out. And we are slowly reducing the diameter by doing that. on the end grain of this piece and we'll just keep going around and doing that until we have cut completely through the end grain and we have something that's fairly rounded at the top and then we can go through with finer cuts and smooth things up we're almost at a point now we've cut through all of the end grain now we have a fresh cut piece of end grain right there now we can come through here with our knife and do our fine work like this. Just using our thumb like a paring cut. Again, our thumb's behind the work. 
the blade is right here in the crook of our hand. It can't go anywhere. It can't hurt us. Any cutting position that we use to cut material should always include some kind of a safety to keep us from getting cut or keep the blade from coming in contact with our skin. Okay, now, the next step in the project is, what I've done is I've laid this beside a 12 inch ruler. And I've made marks on four sides of this thing, every one inch for 12 inches. And then I just drew circles around the piece. Now we're going to carve an indention all the way around this piece at each of those one inch increments, which is going to give us a depth gauge and a measuring device, as well as a fid, and we'll discuss that. Okay, so now all you're going to do is come in here with your knife, get yourself on a solid surface like this, and just push cut that line just like this by rolling your knife across it. Make sure it comes out even and touches. Then all you're going to do is come in and do a series of small push cuts and knock a wedge out. About an eighth of an inch is all it needs to be. Come back in there and trim it if you need to. You're going to make another pass in a minute anyway. This is just your initial cut. And this is probably not perfect. It's not, it doesn't have to be. It just has to be close for the woods. We're not building uh, million dollar houses or $500 pieces of furniture. If I measure this as one inch and I use that same measurement on everything that I'm using in a project, they're going to be the same length. Doesn't matter whether it's one inch or one inch and an eighth. Then we're just going to come back through there and knock down all of those high points to smooth it out. Okay guys, well let's talk real quick about this project. This is mine finished and oiled. And a FID is a device that was used in marline spike seamanship to open up lays and rope to make eye splices to also undo stubborn knots in rope where they had been tightened up under pressure or possibly frozen in the weather they were also used to punch holes in canvas if needs be and sometimes as a last ditch weapon but with a project like this what i tried to do was i tried to make this a multifunctional learning project because it's pretty simple to carve something that's a cone in shape. Although it does take some detail to make it a finished length at 12 inches and make it pretty much a rounded shape and not have too much of a hook to it when you're carving it from a tree. However, the lessons that we learned in this are A, we learned how to make the shape of a bow drill spindle and that's important later on. We used a harder wood by using hickory than we would use for a bow drill spindle because we want to use a softer wood for a bow drill spindle, but the mechanics are still there to make that object. We've learned how to make a FID. We've made it a multifunctional device in that we can now use it for a measurement device and a depth gauge. And we'll use this during the course of our projects in green woodworking. So I encourage you to go out and try to make one of these or get one of these completed and you'll be able to use it later on during our future projects in our green woodworking series. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me here today for this video. I thank you for everything that you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.